Hello, welcome to a special episode of Monday Bagel. Today we celebrate Data Protection Day and I have the pleasure of hosting one of Europe's most active and forward-thinking data protection authorities, Mirosław Wróblewski, president of Polish Personal Data Protection Office. I invited Mirosław because he's one of a few only experts in constitutional law, European law and human rights law with a deep understanding of data protection and AI regulation. Before becoming the head of Polish DPA, he led the Constitutional, International and European Law Department at the Polish Ombudsman Office and played an active role in key European institutions, including the EU Fundamental Rights Agency and the European Network of National Human Rights Institution. Uh, I invited Mirosław to this podcast not as an official or a government representative, but as a fellow researcher, and I would like our discussion to reflect that. Two scholars exploring the intersection of human rights and data protection law. Mirosław, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for the invitation, and it's a pleasure to be here and talk with you today. Uh, let's start with the fundamentals. AI and data protection have become deeply connected. Why is personal data protection still so essential in the AI era? Algorithms process uh, personal data in uh, so many variations and in uh, different stages, then this makes uh, data protection still so important. Some say it's 95% of algorithms even uh, process personal data. Of course, it's the training uh, phase, uh, especially where the algorithm uh, learn how to work uh, further. This is uh, quite uh, visible in the last opinion of European Data Protection Board of 17th December last year, analyzing uh, models of artificial intelligence in the light of uh, data protection law. And uh, of course, different stages, different uh, questions of the Irish uh, data protection body are addressed. But GDPR still is workable whenever personal data are processed. Of course, when we have models and it is highly improbable, personal data are still processed they are fully anonymized and there is no chance the operators can refer to personal data of an identified person. Yes, agreed, GDPR no longer is in force, but uh, this is rather still an exception. The AI system addressed to people, uh, helping people, giving a guidance or whenever they refer to people, they process personal data. Therefore, GDPR is still an important point of reference and there is still much to do for the independent uh, personal data authorities. I read a few articles recently, a few papers about AI, intersection of AI and GDPR, uh, and many experts discuss whether it's an uh, intersection between providers of big models and providers of other services, like marketing services, like others using our data, but there is very few human in the loop. So how important is respecting human rights, keeping humans in the loop, uh, not to lose us, uh, not to regulate just uh, the GPAI model providers and other service providers, but forgetting about uh, humans. What do you think? Uh, In my opinion, whenever algorithms uh, provide services to the people, it is the human that should be in the center of its functioning. AI is just a tool, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Whichever concept we, we apply, it's, uh, it is to serve people. And of course, therefore, uh, we have this ethical background and uh, European concept of uh, human-centric artificial intelligence, uh, but at the same time of building trust to this uh, tool. Therefore, Artificial Intelligence Act aim is not only to, to protect human uh, as regards uh, its life and safety, but also uh, protecting fundamental rights as enshrined in the European Union uh, Charter of Fundamental Rights. AI Act, which is often seen as a product regulation, 
is also a fundamental rights protective tool and a guarantee, especially with the, this basic aim, as uh, stated in Article 1, Paragraph 1, and also with uh, other tools like a fundamental rights impact assessment, which aim is also to protect fundamental rights. However, in a relatively uh, limited area, but quite important and referring to high risk system. So maybe let's touch this FRIA institution. Many, many say that uh, it's kind of over-regulation. I do not agree with them. I agree with you that human rights should be in the loop uh, and, uh, and we should keep humans in the loop. And uh, these are important public services uh, regulated by FRIA. Many organizations are familiar with DPIA, uh, and, but fundamental rights impact assessment is something new. How should they approach it? Is it possible to do it to fulfill this obligation the same way as DPIA or somehow else? What do you think? In my opinion, one should pay attention to this tool not only from the point of view of data protection, uh, but uh, in a broader picture of respect to fundamental rights. However, as you rightly mentioned, DPIA is an important part of this venture. It is clearly stated that the DPIA, which is already done, consumes actually FRAA in terms of this part of the exercise of the risk analysis uh, is done whenever it is still updated and uh, up to the current risks. I would like to mention that it is not the first tool of such kind. The European Union applied a conditionality mechanism applied to disbursement of EU structure funds for the purpose of meeting rule of law crisis. The general principle is that the EU money should not be spent uh, for the projects and programs for countries and also for areas where fundamental rights and rule of law is endangered and uh, infringed. Uh, an important part of this conditionality mechanism is the conformity mechanism with the Charter of Fundamental Rights and uh, the fundamental rights enshrined in this Charter. So it's, it's maybe not the same, but the, the basic assumption is similar. There should be not AI systems which functioning and decision-making or prognosis lead to violations of fundamental rights, especially in the public sector, where fundamental rights impact assessment is obligatory, and also in other kinds of public functions provided by private entities. It's very interesting because it's very tough to balance these rights. Regarding DPAA, uh, we, we had data protection law and, uh, and other values that, that can be contradictory or supporting uh, privacy or data protection. When we take into account all the rights, it's not easy to balance all the values, all the rights, uh, all the human rights. Exactly, I do agree. Uh, however, I have uh, for this 20 years experience in fundamental rights. But I totally agree with you that as it was difficult under the guidance of uh, conditionality mechanism still for the uh, managing uh, institutions to see how to apply in practice, it is even more difficult, especially for business, to apply far developed proportionality mechanism, which is of a constitutional nature. What is a little bit helpful? This is what actually controllers do when they apply Article 6F, the legal basis of a legitimate controller's interest. Mm -hmm. They have to undergo also a balancing test to see if the processing does not violate rights and freedoms of an individual. This mm -hmm. is quite a limited test. The fundamental rights impact assessment is much broader much more complicated and it uh, covers not only data protection but also other rights uh, but it, it may be kind of a starting point i would say a first similar test which uh, maybe make things easier what is important i think obviously all ai providers wait for the digital template from the ai office 
Uh, mm-hmm. This is true. It is a tool which have to help providers when undergoing fundamental rights impact assessment. But it is already done partially by the Council of Europe uh, institutions, the Committee of AI, mm-hmm. helping with understanding the framework Council of Europe Convention on Artificial Intelligence, provided us last autumn with Fuderia methodology, mm-hmm. which may serve as a kind of a guidance. The first thing is to the mapping exercise, the mapping of a potential fundamental rights and freedoms which might be related to the functioning of the artificial intelligence system. The mapping exercise is somehow instructed and followed by the uh, methodology. Uh, Consultation with important stakeholders, which is also an interesting uh, step. And then the committee recommends as a third step actually to undergo risk assessment based and related to specific uh, rights and freedoms. So the, this mapping exercise is very important because it narrows. Mm-hmm. It narrows the potential application of the AI system to, uh, for instance, the problem of freedom of speech or the, I would say, protection of personal goods. And there you can uh, make this assessment in a more limited area, which is like a more easy to grasp. Because this is totally true what you said. The general fundamental rights impact assessment may be seen as a venture for constitutionalists, not for, for business. This was my next question. You know how few constitutional experts are in the field of law. So how to handle without them uh, to do it? Kuderia project may be helpful, uh, digital templates may be helpful, but do we need more trained people in this field? Or do you think DPOs uh, may cope with that or some other way? Uh, Obviously, I think training is necessary. More guidance is necessary, not only from EU institutions, but also from national institutions. This may also refer to fundamental rights institutions, which also are a part of the AI Act uh, system. But I think that DPOs, uh, as I said, know this uh, balancing test. And this is some kind of a first step, first exercise they can do when they know the nature of the system, it will be much more easy to, to undergo fundamental rights impact assessment. Of course, a thorough knowledge of jurisprudence is needed, and this calls for more training on the fundamental rights as interpreted as in uh, the jurisprudence of uh, Court of Justice, ECHR. Obviously, there are some questions which are to be answered, and therefore I am still not aware of how deep this test will go in the template of the AI office, Mm. so I will stop here because as i said we still have some time Mm -hmm. there is a room for more guidance but meeting with constitutionalists and fundamental rights lawyers i think this is uh, probably the program for 2025 for most of ai deployers Okay, uh, I fully understand. I I take part in the drafting code of practice for AI office, and I know how how many discussions and how many points are still open. So so I I fully understand that we have now space for for discussions. Maybe one last question: What practical steps can organization take to prepare for obligations under AI Act? Uh, also, not to lose the GDPR from from their side. So maybe a few tips uh, for 2025. What would you advise? Practical steps for the preparation of uh, yes. applying the impact assessment and AI Act as as a whole. And, uh, what are your ideas about it? This is a very broad question. Yeah. So actually, when it comes to AI and uh, data processing, I think the the starting point should be GDPR, GDPR, because as stated in AI Act, the GDPR shall not be infringed by AI Act. So this is a basis and it will be followed uh, by data protection institutions. When it uh, comes to uh, application of artificial intelligence, I think the transparency and uh, access to information and uh, documentation 
regarding functioning artificial intelligence system is a precondition for the uh, just and uh, trustful functioning of uh, AI. It is a basic principle which will allow for the uh, proper assessment of the system, not only by data protection authorities, but also by market surveillance uh, authorities under AI Act. Also, it is important as regards with relations with data subjects. However, they will need more guidance. So we also know that, it, for instance, comes to the Artificial Intelligence Liability Directive. It's still under negotiations. But also, principle of transparency is a precondition for the uh, building trust to artificial intelligence for the good system of liability. So I will say for first month of 2025 that this application and also providing proper information, documentation and uh, access to visible and transparent functioning of algorithms is, uh, is a very important uh, step with which it will be much more easy not only for functioning of business uh, but also it will build more trust, leave room for more innovation mm -hmm. and also, I would say, make the market institution working together with uh, providers to achieve coherent application of AI Act, uh, GDPR. So this is quite a difficult question, but I think this is something which should be a priority now. I would add uh, building uh, teams, multidisciplinary teams that include legal, technical and ethical and maybe also constitutional experts. But these are really good tips, uh, Mirosław. Thank you for sharing your insights on AI data protection and the AI Act. It's been an honor to have you on this special data protection day. I would add follow Polish DPA's website where you provide really good guidance and uh, and you give it more and more. So probably 2025, it will be even more valuable insights there. Yes, uh, an important part of this change is also a national implementation of AI Act. And we have lately published a position regarding the draft Polish law on the artificial uh, intelligence systems. So I also recommend uh, taking a look uh, at our website. Thank you again for, for the invitation. Thank you very much. And to all our listeners, if you found this discussion valuable, subscribe to my podcast, to Monday Bible, for more expert conversation on AI, law and technology. See you. Bye-bye.